I hate racism, I hate sexism, and I hate the Vandy Vape Jackaroo dual screen. Period. Cold in the ice, refrigerator. Never really gone, I'm back. Terminator. Gotta explain. Translator. Jumps off the game like a deep for I'm thesis. Just in case you get in no check the speakers. Just in case you get in no I'm going to check the speakers. Just in case you get in no Welcome thesis. to Vegan with Thesis. I am Nas, and today we have got the Jackaroo Duel. This is the mod that the Aegis legend always wanted to be. Ready? One, two, three, go. Vandy Vape Jack Rudul 18650 device. By far and away, one of my favorite devices to ever come out of Vandy Vape, period. This mod in particular is, in my opinion, what the Aegis legend should have been to begin with. You feel me? I've had nothing but problems with my Aegises. I had two of them, both of which completely died. This one has already been put through the ringer and I will continue to stress test it throughout this video. Testing, te which microphone? Ah, ah, microphone. So firstly, I don't usually do things uh, like this to devices I like, but as you can see, there is a portion of my wall where I do tend to throw things if I get frustrated with the device, RDAs, etc. We're going to do the same thing with this. Ready? All right, so just thinking about real life scenarios because I just don't want to destroy it. I want to actually do some things that would actually happen. So let's go ahead and pop this up on the workbench. And this is something we've done all a thousand times. You've got to sit on the edge, you go to grab something over here, whoops and then it falls off, right? Let's go and give it a test. Beautiful, still as is. I'm not sure how many of you actually work on your own vehicles. However, I'm gonna be changing the oil in the truck today. And for those of you who work on your own vehicles, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you leave your mod sitting in the engine bay, say right up here on the air filter. Again, same thing, you go to move it, you go to just go and grab something behind it and it drops. Let's go and give that a shot. Whoops. And then, whoops. Let's go and take a look. Didn't even open up on the battery door. That's pretty impressive. Beautiful, just as you'd want it to. All right, so truth be told, this one kind of terrifies me. I really don't want this to fuck the mod up and I genuinely like this mod a lot. So uh, with that said, let's just give it a shot. There we go. Close it up. There it is. Now again, true to life, if you did drop it in the toilet or something like that, that's, you know, logical or whatever, you're gonna dry it off at least as well as you can, which I'm just gonna do the bottom here. And I wanna go ahead and look in that battery compartment to see whether or not there's any leakage in there. Anything at all. Absolutely bone dry. Aside from right here on the lip, a little bit of condensation, a little bit of water on that line, Nothing seemed to have gotten past that. Though at any you know length of time, I would assume that eventually there'd be some leakage into the battery compartment itself. But if you're dropping it into like a lake or something like that, you're probably not retrieving it anyway. But for a toilet or in the sink on accident or it's raining outside, you should be just fine. Now the only other thing I could think of is the micro USB port right there. If and it's not sealed, that is gonna stay wet unless you can hit that with an air compressor, which of course I am gonna do before we finish up that review. Yep, I do just wanna go ahead and throw these batteries in. Do not try this at home for the love of God. I'm doing it so you don't have to. Let's pop this on. Let's see if that screen comes on. Sure enough, just like clockwork. All right, Benedict Mooks, now that it all dried off, let's go and get back to the studio. Ready, one to the go. With that said, let's just go ahead and dive into it. Bang, you know, grab this, look at the back, we got some words, and all of a sudden you just gotta walk up on it super surprised like, and just be like, fist jewel, right to the dome piece. Whew. Now we got this beautiful black box with some chrome embossed work. Ooh, it is not embossed. They went a little bit cheapy cheap on this one. A little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more logical. I do appreciate that. Some people say a box is a box. They're wrong. I just enjoy uh, nice packaging and that is definitely a decent box. Bam. So we got this sitting right here off in the center. On the right hand side, we've got this box. Although I wouldn't call it a goodies box because I mean, boxes should have six sides. And this box clearly has four sides and a flap. Bam. Give a little fingerla, fingerla. Whew. We got ourselves an adorable little cable. Now, this is a, a very nitpicky thing, but it's kind of my thing. I wish that this was a much longer cord and I wish it was a much more, I don't know, well-built cord. This is just your standard micro USB, uh, one foot, not even. This is what you would see in most basic kits ranging from 2012 all the way up to now. And you're not gonna wanna charge the device with it. It's more or less for an emergency, at least in my case. Pop this up right here, this little foam, closed cell foam. And then we grab the paperworks. We do it like this. Quality control, pass. Warranty card, mm-hmm. Proper use guide, yep. We've got the device. This 
fuck this. This is bullshit. I've tried so many times to download this app on my iPhone. It is impossible. I cannot figure it out. And it is what it is. Just leave it for what it is. Why? I don't need an app. However, I will tell you a story over the Halloween holiday that actually worked out. The whole Bluetooth situation worked for me. So with that said, we got this little uh, Manuel. Open it up. We got ourselves Caesar Manuel. This is Carlos Manuel. That's Sanchez Manuel. This right here. Oh, this is this is Manuel Rodriguez. Atención. So let's just go ahead and get off the bat. I was interested in this device the moment I opened the box. I'm not a huge fan of this coloring with this coloring just because they don't match perfectly. But I will tell you what, I do like the fact that these panels are replaceable. It does not come with a tool to replace the panels, but that does give you a hint that they are going to have the panels for sale on a separate basis. So with that said, let me go and just kind of give you a rundown of what happened and why this became my daily vape. My daily vape prior to this was the Vaporesso Gen S. As you can see, this is an extra high-end mod. Now, this has been through hell and back. And now... If you can stop yourself from laughing for about 30 seconds, you can see just for a moment, my Gen S explode from my right ass cheek pocket. This is just one of the times where this mod should have been destroyed, but simply survived. Went back to hell and I found it again, frozen in the tundra in a cornfield uh, via, you know, snowmobile, ran over a hundred times. Just look at that. I want to give you an idea of the amount of stress I've put this device under. Just look at it once. Look at the 510. It's extremely wiggly. The 510 on here is not great in terms of the deck itself. It is extremely etc. I finally wanted to retire this device, but I didn't want to retire the tank and I lost both of them snowmobiling a couple of weeks ago. What ended up by happening was I used a Vaporesso, what was it? The energy tank atop this device just out of sheer panic. And I threw the energy tank on this as I was going to look for this device and this tank. And eventually I did find it in the cornfield, you know, a half hour, an hour after I'd initially lost it. The moment I started using this, I immediately knew I would definitely be keeping this for myself. This Jackaroo in the hand is by far and away the most comfortable device I've ever held. It is perfectly built for my size hands. If you wear large to extra large gloves, this device will feel perfect in the hand. So that is my initial first thoughts. Now, of course, I started to do some more research. I started to look at exactly what all the features were and the chipset in and of itself is exactly the same as you would expect from Vandy Vape. It's essentially the same one that's in the uh, the Tony V pulses, the Pulse 2, etc. It's the exact same chip with a couple of different features. Now, the first thing that stood out to me is it's just like the Jackaroo 1. However, this is a dual 18650. Let's go and pop the bottom off real quick, but before we do, take a look at that nice chunk I've already taken out of that bottom. That's just from dropping it on the concrete multiple times, countless times. Pull back, it flips up. That spring is absolutely perfect. Listen to that spring and locking mechanism close once. Beautiful. Let's go and do it one more time. That's open. Let's go and close it. That's something I love to see, especially in something like a life-proof device. So I'm looking at this as I was opening up and as I was first initially using it, and I saw IP67, which is a waterproofing rating, and I'll put the specifics right here, which blew my mind. I'm like, this is amazing, this is great. This is what the Aegis Legend, for example, was supposed to be. Also, that device in and of itself, the Aegis Legend, kind of made me lose faith in having a life-proof mod. I didn't necessarily think that, that was possible, of course, because you have like the micro USB kind of open. And for me with the Aegis Legend, even with that little cover on top for the micro USB, I was still getting liquid in there, and that's what eventually shorted my chip, you know, after two months or so. You've got this beautiful rubber gasket that goes around the battery tray, or excuse me, battery door. And you've also got a secondary gasket where this lays right there at the base of the top of the battery tray. That is, again, just, it's just a little extra step. Now, one of the things that I was a little bit worried about, and I made sure to do this on a constant basis, by the way, was this little tab, this little tongue coming out, either wearing down or this wearing down, because as you can see, there's two little notches, one there, one there where it's continuously rubbing back and forth. Now I've opened this and closed this hundreds of times already. It's only been a couple of weeks and I've closed and opened it and it has not lost any tension. It is just as secure now as it was then. Now this here is another great thing. I never recommend ever using battery wraps that are nicked or scratched. However, if you had uh, put in a scratched battery wrap into this device, I'm not as worried about it when you have a lined battery compartment. That right there should take care of some of those, you know, inherent scratches you're going to get. If you're out dirt biking, if you're out snowmobiling, uh, say there's a scratch on one of your batteries, you're not noticing it, you throw it in, you should be okay temporarily. Nice big fat positive and minus symbols right here at the bottom as well as at the top. I do like the dual placement of those logos or of those uh, symbols rather. So we're going to pop our batteries in, two gold plated contacts, shutting that right there, listen to it. 
Now I'm gonna flip it over to the side, you're gonna see Vandy Vape. The screen on it is by far and away the ugliest screen they could have possibly picked. Vandy Vape, oh man, S fucking dude. Sometimes I get annoyed with how some companies can do something so well and then completely drop the ball on the other hand. Everything on this device, the feeling of it, the way that it looks, even down to the, the button placement and even down to the clickiness of the buttons is exactly what I want in a mod. There's no 510 deck to go loose, just like, you know, something like this. Let me go ahead and show you an example. This will not happen because the whole top of the Jackaroo Duel is the 510 deck. I would much prefer to see that than something like this. Everything that they've done correctly on here that I'm enjoying is, a, I don't wanna say ruined, it's very, mm, I don't even know how to explain this to you. I've gotta look at that screen. You're forcing me to look at that screen and I don't want to. Like it makes me mad when I look at how ugly this screen is. The colors of it are ugly. Everything about that screen is absolute garbage. It's like owning, I don't know, your fantasy dream car. Mine's like a 2006 Murcielago, right? Lamborghini. But then having to be forced to, to look at a piss yellow interior. <laughs> Gross. That's what I'm looking at. Baby shit green. What is that? Fucking, did you get this from Duck Dynasty? Camo? I don't even know what color green that is. It's ugly. The 510 threads are literally second to none. These threads are perfect and exactly what I would hope for in a life-proof device. Spring-loaded 510 and the spring is extremely hard to push down. And I mean that in a good way. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have a spring that's got a lot of tension on it. Once you're popping your tanks on and off, you are eventually gonna scratch some of this paint off, which is to be expected. We do have a quote-unquote one-way valve or one-way, I'm not necessarily sure what this is for, if it's for water, if it gets inside there, but that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Like it defeats the purpose of it being waterproof if there's a drain hole for it. I, I just, I guess I don't understand why that would be the case. Is it for batteries? I mean, because I, I, I sort of hope not. I would rather the batteries be venting from the bottom than the top. I'll go ahead and show you the chip, but I have shown you that in past videos. So if you want to take a look at the chip on a little bit more in-depth level, you absolutely welcome to. Right here at the top is going to be your main settings. Of course, temperature control. It's going back up to the top here. Temperature control, voltage, bypass mode, which is kind of cool that this even has that. I, I'm a big fan of bypass. If you like mech mods, for example, and you want the voltage from the batteries to go directly into your device or into your atomizer, great option right there if you want to be safer about it. Let's go ahead and hit that app. Right here's the one that kind of pisses me off. I do not know how to get the app on my phone. Simply put, like I've tried a dozen times, I can't figure it out. Um, there was one time where I was able to get to the download page and then it just wouldn't let me do it. And again, I know that there's a lot of issues with uh, iOS and, and vape apps, etc. that have to disguise them, which is fine. But at the end of the day, like I really just wanted to use it for the Bluetooth setting to find my mod. But with that said, there is a workaround. Now let's go ahead and discuss that Bluetooth setting real quick. It did work out for me before we go into the rest of the settings. So on Halloween night, I had lost my mod a couple of times and initially I could not find it. But then it popped into my brain that every time that I'm using my device, my mod, I go into my Bluetooth settings at the bottom, the Vandy Vape will pop up. With that said, when I was out and about, we're on the four wheelers, we're, we're trick-or-treating, all that kind of good stuff, and I did not have this signal. There was no Bluetooth, you know, it didn't want to connect, there was nothing there, and that's how I knew that it was not on the trailer. So we went back to the car, opened up the vehicle, and of course it was sitting right there. Boom, beautiful. Now. Later on in that evening, again, I lost my mod. It was somewhere in the back of the trailer with everybody, couldn't find it, but I did know that it was around me somewhere because it was still trying to connect to the Vandy Vape. So again, the only purpose that I wanted to use that, uh, that app for was to look for my device when I couldn't find it. So with that said, it still is a useful feature, at least for me. Now granted, there's no like speaker or beepy thing that I can make go off. I just know that it's somewhere within my vicinity and that's kind of peace of mind. All right, so back into the menu setting, left and right. Right here is your sleep or your hibernate setting, which is a low power mode, mode of course. Bring back up to 10 and then down here, this is our brightness. Let's go and turn this a little bit higher so you guys can see how ugly that screen is. Now speaking of brightness, um, I actually haven't noticed much of a difference in terms of battery life with it. I will say that the efficiency of this chip could probably be better, but for a dual 18650 running at 101 watts, I'm getting roughly six to eight hours out of this uh, without even trying. Like it's just awesome. Though I do notice that around 50%, 40% of those batteries, uh, it, it really starts to curtail its performance, which sucks, but it is what it is. It's kind of what you expect once your 18650s hit that, you know, 60 and below is kind of where I'm talking about. The next setting is going to be our reset for puff counts. Yes, no, I've got this one at 2,670. 
it's been quite a while like i said a few weeks right here the next one is going to be uh the replacement visual interface i'm not sure what the, if that's vi or ui user interface i've got it on that baby shit duck dynasty green if we go here we can do japanese communist red if we do the next one that's like what turkish communism let's go and do the red again it is not a pretty color i wish they just had black or bl something that's a normal color bam that's the reset for factory settings and then back to oh good god it's like the russian government threw up on my screen. Get the fuck out of here with that. We'll have to go right back to Duck Dynasty baby shit green. Now here's some of the features that are most important to myself and that's gonna be right here. Upside down screens, that's... Ah. You wanna talk about useless settings. I don't even have to say anything else. You see it, that's my favorite feature. Now here's the most important feature to me on any device, right here. Positive, fire, same time, boom, locks. But I can still fire it. That is by far and away the most important setting and I'm happy it's on here. Now the one thing I could not figure out if this has or doesn't have is, the, if it's, is a stealth mode. And that's one thing I really miss about the original DNA 250s, DNA 75s, the black and white ones. It was, it was super easy to put them in stealth mode. I you know, wake up at one o'clock in the morning, I wanna take a hit off my device, but as soon as I do, it's like a goddamn fireworks show in my fucking bedroom and I don't wanna look at it. I don't want there to be light at all. So I have to turn the brightness all the way down. But of course, when the daytime, I wanna bring it back up. It's just a couple extra steps I'd rather not do. But the fact that I can set it, lock it, fire it without having to worry about it adjusting in my pocket, that's always convenient to me. And it always surprises me at how many devices don't actually have that setting. Now, let me go ahead and show you a party trick that again, I am super happy Vandy Vape did it this way. When I pop this tank off and I put on a new tank, it doesn't ask me no bullshit. It just fires it at exactly where I left it, which is what I want. If I want to adjust it, I don't want this doing it automatically. Put this left and right, the positive minus, and it's gonna ask you right here, coil new, coil old. If it's new, hit that positive button, and then adjust it to where it thinks it should be. That is what I like to see. God, those vapor wrestle coils are solid. Still not as good as my Freemax Fire Luke, uh, Fire Lock coils, the sex tuple ones in particular, but they're pretty fucking solid. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now, with that said, I think this right now is retailing for around 40 to, what, $75 for the kit, roughly thereabouts. If it truly is between 40 and 50 bucks for the device, that is a steal. Listen to my voice. I have, that is a steal. Just fucking believe me okay now real quick before we continue there's a couple of the reasons why i want to test this a little bit further and that's because of things like this this doesn't bother me initially you know the first couple of months first month or so but this right here looks like it's it's inject molded but there's seams still on it if there are seams on a device like this right here and right here you know that there's a slight possibility even if it's slight it's still a possibility that water is going to get up and in there also the micro USB port is completely exposed. I don't know how well that is sealed and if it's sealed at all. So to call something waterproof is a really tall order. In my opinion, I would say this is much more close to water resistant or liquid resistant than it actually is waterproof. Now, again, I wanna reiterate the two things I am worried about and that's gonna be these seams here. I will test that out. And then of course, this battery door tab. These two things between that and that seam, I think are probably going to be its failure points eventually as to how long I'm not sure, but I am genuinely going to keep this as my daily vape for quite some time. So with that said, Ninja Monks, let's go ahead and film some stress testing and then we'll get back to regular view. One, two, three, go. <clears throat> my final submission is this. The Jackaroo Duel by Vandy Vape is legitimately my favorite. It doesn't mean it does everything perfectly. A great example of that is of course the screen. I hate racism, I hate sexism, and I hate the Vandy Vape Jackaroo Duel screen. Period. The amount of shit that I've put this thing through, there's no way that my Gen S would have been able to stand up for much more abuse. And it has stood up to some of the most insane things I've ever put mods through. But on a regular basis, the things that the average person would do, this should go above and beyond what any other device is capable of. Now, some would argue that the Aegis Legend uh, is much better than I give it credit for. However, with my personal experience, I've had two go bad on me in less than a couple of months apiece. But of course, there's a lot of people who have long-term success with that specific device, and if you do, congrats, that's great. To me, the Vandy Vape seems to have done everything the Aegis Legend was wanting to do. So with that said, 188 watts for me is more than enough. Dual 18650 is perfect for what I use my devices for. I would prefer to see a 2700 or a 21700 version uh, come down the road. But like I said, the 18650 is perfect for me. 68 hours, perfect. Absolutely perfect. The fact that you can change out the panels, that is super cool. Uh, though I, I'm not... 
sure what Vanny Vape's obsession is with this weird resin color. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it, though I don't understand people's hatred for it. I just, I feel like uh, the carbon fiber would look much nicer, especially if it's an all blacked out uh, type matchy matchy situation going on. Um, I do like the idea of resin wood panels, stab wood, anything like that would look beautiful on here. If I were to recommend any upgrades to this specific mod, it'd be to take care of these seams right here on the sides. For me personally, I wish it was over molded as well as inject molded the same way you see with like Milwaukee tools or Dewalt tools. Some of my favorite features on the device is of course that locking feature where I can lock it and still fire the device at the same time. And then of course this big giant round button is perfectly placed in my opinion, as well as it's got that perfect amount of throw. Take a listen. It's not that chintzy, tinny click like you would expect from the old school DNA 30s, DNA 50s, DNA 60s, etc. This has its own like pop to it and I really enjoy that. It's a very easy to use chip, very rudimentary. It's exactly what you would expect to have in a fairly advanced regulated device. It's not a DNA device. You're not gonna be able to change your backgrounds, etc. as far as I know anyway. And I wish it did have that ability um, right off the bat from the actual user interface that you get out of the box. Um, the fact that you can't, again, like I said, it sucks. I just do not like the way that the screen looks. I've had it for two weeks, roughly there, and I've used it non-stop since and I, I gotta tell you what this thing is held up to every bit of abuse that I've given to it You just saw some of the footage and I've done more than that just owning it simply put for 40 to 50 dollars I think this thing is a steal if you can get the kit for you know under 70 75 something like that I think it's definitely worth the investment now with that said on thesis patented finger accountability scale I'm gonna give it a solid eight to an eight and a half because it does exactly what it advertises it does There's no frills. There's no bullshit. It just is what it is. It's a do everything device it's got everything you would expect and everything that you would want and it doesn't have anything extra. I like that. It's a boiled down life proof device. Period. End of sentence. P.S. Vandy Vape. Go fuck yourself and change the name. The Jackaroo? I don't even know what that is. Have no idea. Also, the only other improvement that I would recommend, it doesn't fire as fast as I would like it to if you can just, here, just take a listen once. There's a definite lag that I noticed between this and like the Gen S, for example. Actually, there's definitely a noticeable amount of time that passes between the fire and the actual peak of the power. It's like a solid, I don't know, maybe a third of a second, which doesn't seem like a lot, but there's definitely time that lapses between hitting the fire button and it actually firing. But of course, that's kind of nitpicky. It's not gonna bother everybody. It doesn't bother me per se, but I definitely know that they can make improvements. Bitch, it's okay, it's mother truckers. Now with that being said, I wanna tell you that I appreciate you up for vaping with Thesis. It is your boy Thesis, I'm out.